The Disappearance of Sarah Oglethorpe. It was 1843 in Backwoods, Kentucky. Her name was Sarah Oglethorpe. She was a headstrong girl in her late teens who wanted to improve herself, and get a good education. All she got was dead. Sarah lived in a little shack that was more holes than wood. She shared it with her ma, her pa and two sisters, Ida Mae and Minnie. Her ma took in sewing from the rich people in town. That was the only income the poor family had, except for the few times that Sarah's pa was so want for a bottle that he worked a few hours for one. Most of the time Sarah's ma did all the working, and her pa drank up all the money. He never did any work around the house either. The place was a wreck. One night neighbors heard a terrible row coming from the Oglethorpe place, even though the closest house was a quarter mile away. The Oglethorpe place sat down in a little hollow in the hills, and everything that happened there was carried by the wind to about three or four neighbors. Anyway, this fight was a doozy. They could hear Sarah and her father fighting like a pair of bull moose. The names they called each other made the neighbors blush, but they were determined to mind their own business. They could tell John Oglethorpe, Sarah's father, had been sipping the bottle again. It seemed like all that man did was drink and holler. Suddenly the fighting stopped. Even though they told themselves they weren't interested and it wasn't polite to interfere, every neighbor found an excuse to step out on their front porch to see what else the wind might carry their way. There was nothing. He must have passed out again, they all commented to themselves. It was something nearly every neighbor had seen him do at some point, he did it so often. The neighbors stayed on their porch a little while longer, and finally were rewarded with the sound of Sarah singing. There was about a stanza or two, then that noise abruptly stopped also. The next day Sarah didn't make it to school. The neighbors didn't think a whole lot about it. When her father became violent, she was known to take a day or two off to heal her wounds. It was embarrassing to her for the other kids to see the welts and bruises on her body. The next day being Saturday, nobody missed Sarah, but when Sunday rolled around everybody expected to see her and her ma and two sisters in church. Her ma and her two sisters were there all right, but neither Sarah nor her father showed. The whole town could see the swelling and tears rimming the family's eyes, and they only thought it neighborly to ask after those that weren't there. Sarah's run away, her ma finally confessed to her closest friends. Her pa and her had a big fight and now she's gone. Nothing but a note left on the kitchen table saying she was off to seek her fortune, when she found it, she find a way to share it with her ma and sisters, but in a way her pa couldn't drink it up. That made him mad and things were pretty bad for a bit until I got more drink in him and he went to sleep. She gave me her solemn words she'd write me every week, her ma said, her eyes spilling over with tears. Three days later the first letter came. It was in Sarah's handwriting and was addressed to her ma. There was no return address, but the letter had been mailed from in town. It said that something had happened to her, but not to worry. She was fine now and everything was right as could be. Tucked inside the letter was a rumpled five dollar bill, with a note attached admonishing her ma not to let her pa get his hands on it or it would be drunk away tomorrow. In those days five dollars was a lot of money. Instead of being happy, Sarah's mom was scared. She didn't want to think of how a young girl Sarah's age could earn that much money in just a few days. The week after that another five dollars came, and then another the following week. Each of the letters was blank in the upper corner, with no address to show from where it had come. Only the postmark from town. Sarah's ma couldn't believe it. There was finally enough money to feed her two youngest properly. The week after that, disaster struck. The postman came by when Sarah's ma was out. Her pa ripped open her letter and discovered the money inside with the note. At that moment Sarah's ma came in the door with her two sisters. Her pa went wild. He demanded to know how long Sarah had been sending money and why he hadn't been given it. He started spending his anger on them and swinging his fist like he was bailing water. Suddenly a look of astonishment came over his face. He started swinging at dead air, but panic overcoming him. Suddenly he collapsed in a heap on the floor. 
Sarah's ma sent the children to a neighbor's house so they would be safe when their pa awoke. Then she set about to fixing supper. Her husband never woke up that night, but she sat up all night working on her sewing. She was afraid to go into the room. Afraid that he would wake up and the awful tirade would start again. By morning Sarah's ma had fallen asleep over her work. Suddenly she awoke to her husband screaming from the next room. His temper was worse than ever. He was hollering as loud as he could holler and things were getting thrown about something awful. Then came an even worse sound, one that Sarah's ma had never heard before, and it scared the fear right out of her. Her husband was crying. He was whimpering like a two-year-old too short to reach the sugar barrel. Moments later it was quiet again. Slowly the door to the bedroom opened and Sarah's pa shuffled meekly out. As his wife stood there in shock, he apologized for all the wrongs he had done them. He said he was sorry for all the pain he had caused, because of his drinking. Sarah, he said, had made him choose between the drink and his family. If his wife would be willing to keep him, he would do his best to find a job and stay off the bottle. If he couldn't, he wouldn't be back. Sarah's here? Her mother asked. She had heard no other voice in the bedroom. And, unless she'd scrambled through the window, Sarah hadn't entered the room. For an answer, he stared at the floor, unwilling to say anything further. Sarah's ma rushed to the bedroom, but it was empty. She stepped back out to find her husband wringing his hands like an old-fashioned washing machine. Can I stay? He asked humbly. Sarah's ma took a moment to think it over. There really wasn't any love left in this marriage. But she believed divorce to be a wicked thing. And before herself she must think of her children. Finally she answered with a strength she didn't know she had. You may stay as long as you never touch another drop, she said. Sarah's pa got himself cleaned up and headed for town to look for work. It was the first time he'd done it without meaning to get himself just enough to get drunk. Everything was fine for three days. Then he came home from work one night with the smell of moonshine on his breath and his temper raging forth. He started swearing and swinging as soon as he crossed the threshold, but he got no further. Suddenly his eyes popped out from his head and his features melted into a look of fear. Sarah's ma and sisters were huddled together against the wall. They felt a cool breath of wind brush past them. Sarah's pa turned and ran, screaming as if he was wearing fire. That was the last anyone ever saw of Sarah's pa. The money from Sarah kept coming week after week. There was always a tender note telling her family she loved them. And always a five dollar bill tucked inside. Sarah's ma kept quiet about where she was getting the money, afraid that someone would waylay the postman and steal the cash. She kept up to her sewing for the rich folks, but everybody noticed that now her children were beginning to fill out properly. And they were wearing clothes a lot prettier than they had ever worn before. Then it happened. Two young boys were hunting through the backwoods. They were trying to catch a squirrel for a dinner stew when one of the lads tripped over something sticking up out of the ground. It was a bone. Thinking it was a deer or some other large animal, they started to dig it up. Suddenly they came upon the clothing and the skull, and realized they had uncovered the body of a girl. They raced out of the woods and straight to the sheriff. He rounded up a few men and they set out to dig up the body. It didn't take long for them to identify her. Even though there was nothing but a bare skeleton left, the body belonged to Sarah Oglethorpe. And she'd been dead a long time. The sheriff and his men investigated. Finally they decided her palm must have killed her that night they had the awful row. They spent a bit of time looking for him, but the man had cleaned clear out of the county. The next week, like every week before, a letter came. Only this one was a little different, that reads. My dearest ma, now you know. I could never tell you about the money before, because I wanted so much for you to have it. Now that pa has chosen the drink over his family duties, you need it more than ever. And every week it shall come, along with a note from my heart to yours. The money comes from one who can spare it. 
He saw me walking down the road after I left that night. He was kind enough to offer a lift, but then he wanted me to pay for it. He knew I didn't have any money, and money wasn't really the payment he wanted. I jumped from the buggy and ran. He started after me, saying he was sorry and it was all right. He thought I was a different kind of girl that goes along that road at all hours of the night. I still didn't trust him and kept going. I was running up the road and he was coming after me in the buggy when I slipped and fell. He was moving too fast to stop, and the wheels ran over my legs. It hurt for only a moment, then stopped. Somehow I knew I was going home. I could feel the blood coming out pretty fast. The man was holding me and begging me not to die. He kept asking what he could do. I took one look at his fancy buggy and his uppity suit, and asked if he would provide for you and the little ones. He promised he would if I would let him know how. I passed over before I could tell him where to send the money. He loaded me into his buggy and rushed me to his house. The doctor was sent for, but there was nothing could be done by that time. In my mind I kept thinking about my promise to write every week, and it bore heavy on my soul that I should ever break a promise to my ma. You mean more to me than the sunshine, and you know how I adore the sunshine. The boy's pa said he would take care of everything, and for the boy not to worry. I felt a little sorry for him, seeing how it hurt him what he had done. He never knew about me getting buried in the woods. His pa took care of it so there wouldn't be any scandal. The boy thought I was taken care of proper like. He's a good boy. Anyway, that's when I decided to talk with him about getting you and the girls taken care of. I showed up in his room one night and he talked to me like I was still among the living. It didn't seem to bother him and he said he was mighty relieved to be able to keep a promise to a beautiful dying woman. That's when he gave me the money, he wanted it to be more, but I didn't feel it was right, so for now we've settled on five dollars a week. The simple pleasures have always meant the most to me, and I want Ida May and Minnie to learn to appreciate them too. The boy is off to school now, but I still visit him once a week for the money. We have a jolly visit, and we talk and have gay times. It's almost like he was courting me, but of course he can't. We'll just be good friends forever. I tell him how everyone there is doing. He wants to know. He promises that no matter what happens to him in this world, you'll always be provided for. And I'll always watch over you too. Always. With all my heart, Sarah's mother tucked the letter into her drawer. The family dressed in black, and everyone came to say how sorry they were over everything. The family cried for a bit, but somehow it was hard to stay sad about the loss of a loved one when every week a letter came from them. Hope this video creeps you out. And if you like my video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and comment down below. I will be making more videos like this. Thank you.